In the chapter on supply and demand, we talked a lot about curves. As you will recall, the demand curve had not only a downward slope, but the slope was not consistent over the whole curve. This means that a change in price did not always change the quantity demanded in the same way. In this section, we will explore, explore the price elasticity of demand and how to calculate it. The concept of using the total revenue test is also introduced as an easier way to explain elasticity to marketing and brand managers. Finally, the factors influencing the elasticity of demand are also outlined. The price elasticity of demand measures buyers' responsiveness to price changes. We need to understand that if we raise or lower the price for a product or service, will the demand, the change in demand, be small, or will it be dramatic? The answer to that question could determine if we are making the right or wrong decision when we change price for whatever reason. Demand elasticity has two basic categories, elastic and inelastic demand. Elastic demand is very sensitive to price changes. A small change in price will lead to a large change in the quantity demanded for both price increases and decreases. Elasticity works both ways in the short term. Small change in the price of beef or for a meal at a restaurant could lead to significant changes in demand as there are substitutes like chicken. In the case of the restaurant, look, there's another diner up the street. Demand for motor vehicles is also elastic as we can postpone that purchase just for a few more years or purchase another brand. On the other hand, we also have products that have inelastic demand. That is, they're relatively insensitive to price changes. A price change leads to a relatively small change in the quantity demanded. Here are a few examples. Gasoline and electricity, which are part of the infrastructure of our daily lives. They are relatively insensitive to price changes in the short run. How do we determine the demand elasticity of a good or service? Well, there's a formula for that. The elasticity of demand, ED, can be calculated by taking the percentage change in the quantity demanded of product X and then dividing it by the percentage change in the price of product X. This calculation always yields a negative number due to the fact that demand and price are inversely related. There will either be a decreasing demand or a decreasing price. We'll show this in, exa in an example later in the lecture. When we complete the calculation, we will conclude that demand is elastic when the result of the calculation is greater than 1, for example, 2.1, or unit elastic where the result equals 1, or inelastic, where the result is a fraction less than 1, for example, 0.6. Most of the time here in this lecture, we're going to be looking at elastic and inelastic demand. Okay, And you can see here that even though I said we'll produce a negative sign, when we talk about elasticity, we'll say just say the demand, the elasticity of demand is 2.1. We won't say 
negative 2.1. So the negative is eliminated in discussing elasticity um, just for the purposes of simplicity, okay? got some extreme cases here where the demand is perfectly inelastic or perfectly elastic. We're not going to be spending lecture time on these two cases because they're extreme. Here's a simple example of how to calculate the elasticity of demand. Okay, so I've set this up. I've set it up to show two products. Okay, product X at the top and product Y at the bottom. I've included the quantity demanded and I've included the price change and the resulting elasticity of demand. So I want to walk through those. For the elastic demand, example A, Price increases from $1 in period 1 to $1.20 in period 2, an increase of 20%. The demand for product X falls from $150 to $90, a 40% reduction in the quantity demanded. Product X demand is very sensitive to price increases. The calculated elasticity by using the formula, we divide negative 40 by 20, yielding an elasticity of demand of negative 2. The negative is not quoted, and we just say elasticity is 2. The inelastic example B has the same price increase, a dollar to a dollar 20, 20 percent. But the demand for product Y only falls by 7%. Here we would divide 7 by 20, yielding an elasticity of demand of 0.3, the fraction. So at the top, greater than 1, we have elastic demand. The bottom product Y, a fraction, we would say that there is inelastic uh, uh, this represents inelastic demand, and what I've done is make the price changes the same so that you can see the difference in the concept. This is just a simple example of elasticity. By using the simple formula, we don't get the same answer. If we use the same price change, but we reverse period one and period two from the previous example. Here is an example of the same numbers, but with the periods reversed. The formula yields an elasticity of four for product X, 67 divided by 17 versus the previously calculated elasticity of 2. So, we need to have a more robust calculation. By using a calculation called the midpoint formula, we simply average the two prices and the two quantities to eliminate the starting point problem previously discussed. This formula ensures consistent results. Please use this formula when calculating elasticity on any quiz or test question. The midpoint formula first calculates the difference in the quantity demanded and then divides the results by averaging the starting and ending quantities. We do the same for price as shown on the right. 
once these two steps are done, we divide the demand result by the price result to find the elasticity of demand. And what this does, it just basically makes going up and going down the, the demand curve provides the same calculation on the elasticity, and that's the whole objective of the midpoint formula. Here is an example for product X starting from two different points, one with the price going down, and the bottom example shows the price going up. Okay, in both instances, by moving up or down on demand or price, we get the same elasticity results of 2.8. The midpoint calculation provides a more robust calculation of elasticity of demand. Review this example after the lecture, after the lecture to get comfortable with the algebra. Okay? So all I've done here is reverse the, the, the time periods and reverse the changes. Um, both for product X and whether there's a decrease in price top or a decrease in bottom uh, at, at the bottom, you get the same elasticity, which is the important point of this particular calculation. A few final words on why we use percentages in the calculation of elasticity. It's what economists call a unit-free measure. For example, it does not matter what currency we do the calculation in. We can calculate the percent change in dollars or the percent change in rubles and get the same result. Additionally, by using percentages, we can correctly compare consumer responsiveness to the changes in prices of different products, but we compare elasticities uh, across products. That's one of the key advantages of using percentages. Shown here are a number of very different consumer products. The elasticity of demand is shown for each using the same percentage calculation that we have just reviewed. We can immediately see which products are less elastic, like newspapers, and cigarettes, and those that are much more elastic, like beef and residential land, where the calculation is greater than one. The elasticity formula of all of these show allows the same type of comparison. So we can put a whole bunch of products up, and we can compare and discuss the elasticities of each because each will be done with the same formula. You will agree that some of the elasticities on this chart are surprising. So let's look a little deeper into what makes some products elastic and others inelastic. First, do we have other functional choices? Are there substitutes? If yes, then all else equal, the elasticity will be greater than one or elastic. I throw the all else equal phrase here because brands have a strong role to play in defining a substitute. You need shoes for your feet. Not many substitutes. But you may or may not need Nike shoes. Second, the elasticity will be high if the price of the good is proportionally high relative to income. A 10% increase in the price of pencils, uh, price of pencils, will be much less elastic than a 10% increase in the price of automobiles.
continuing to explore the determinants of price elasticity, we can say that the demand for luxury goods is far more elastic than day-to-day -day necessities. Consumers need to buy food staples. They don't need to buy the latest luxury SUV that was introduced this year. Likewise, there is a difference in the short term versus the longer term. A product may have a certain elasticity calculation in a given year. Yet, with the advent of time, and more competitors and substitutes, demand could become more elastic. There are a few other elasticity calculations worth exploring. Cross elasticity of demand is one of them. Sometimes the demand for two products are related. The cross elasticity of demand calculation allows us to determine exactly how related two products are. For example, if the price of hot dogs increases, reducing the demand for hot dogs, then the demand for hot dog buns will also decrease. We would call these products complementary. They complement one another. There's a formula for calculating and evaluating whether products are related or not. We'll review the calculation on the next chart. If the calculation yields a positive result, then we can say that the two goods are substitutes. A negative result would indicate the goods complement one another. The goods would be completely independent if the calculation were zero. Okay, so um, obviously this type of calculation requires a little bit more compiling of the data. It also, in the real world, requires a little bit of knowledge of, of you know, particular industries and the relationship with products. And once you do that, the calculations and the interpretation, you know, are a little bit easier. But I want you to be sure that you understand if you had the data, how would the calculation would be done? So let's look at an example. Okay, the cross elasticity of demand can be found by dividing the percentage change in quantity demanded of product X by the percentage change in the price of product Y. Woo! That is a pretty hefty calculation in terms of the EX of Y, right? So let's walk through an example of that, okay? And we're going to use our hot dog example for the cross elasticity of demand, okay? Um, product X at the top, hot dog buns. Product Y, hot dogs. Okay, let's look at this simple example. The price for hot dogs in this example goes up from 2 to $3, moving from period 1 to period 2. Hot dog demand falls. The demand for hot dog buns also decreases from 200 to 100 in the same period. As is highlighted, we make simplify, a simplifying assumption that the cost of hot dog buns remain constant at a dollar. So you can see at the top the price change, none. 
period one was a dollar and period two was a dollar, okay? And that the change in demand for the hot dog buns was due to the change in the price of hot dogs. And so we do the calculation. We find that the cross elasticity of demand is negative one. And what we know from the previous chart, a negative result would indicate that the goods complement one another. A household's disposable income can also play a role in the sensitivity to changes in price. We can determine the income elasticity of demand by dividing the percentage change in the quantity demanded by the percentage change in income. In other words, as income increases or decreases, what is the effect on the demand for different goods and services? And we can do that with the income elasticity of demand. If the demand for products goes up with rising income, then we can say the goods are normal or superior goods and the elasticity is positive. Although the positive elasticities would be different for vacations and automobiles, but both would be considered to be normal goods. If the demand for certain products goes down with rising income, then we would say the goods are inferior. With rising incomes, people will buy less bus tickets, retread tires, and used clothing. The elasticity would be negative. So, we've got a couple of different measures that we've been through. We have the classic elasticity measure for a good or service. And I want you to concentrate and look back on the midpoint formula for this calculation. We've taken a look at the cross elasticity of demand, which tries to determine whether the goods are substitute or complementary. And then finally, an important one the income elasticity of demand, which basically says, hey, how responsive uh, is the demand for goods or services relative to the changes in income? Obviously, if you're in one of the businesses where a change in small change in income would lead to a very large increase in the demand for your product or your service, you want to know that. And you want to know if the converse is also true. Okay, so income elasticity of demand is an important concept to, to understand and remember. Those calculations. Um, are sometimes pretty difficult to explain to sales and marketing types. You know, they get, sometimes they get all wound up in the algebra, uh, no disrespect to sales and marketing types. But there is a different way called the total revenue test that makes it a little easier to explain the concept of e elasticity to, let's say, non-quantitative individuals, or quite frankly, sit down and in a very simple speech, um, uh, uh, explain to management exactly what will happen to total revenue of the company if there is a change in price. Okay? So in this final section, we're going to review a formula that is much easier 
to determine whether demand is elastic or inelastic. Okay? The calculation is called the total revenue test. It's pretty simple. It takes price times quantity in the first period to yield a total revenue result. This is compared to the total revenue result after the change or in the second period. Demand is inelastic if you get an increase in price and a resulting increase in total revenue. Price and total revenue move in the same direction. Thus, any deterioration in demand was not large enough to cause a decrease in total revenue. Likewise, demand is elastic if price and total revenue move in opposite directions. A firm increases price in an attempt to get more revenue, but the opposite happens. Revenue falls. Or, on the positive side, the firm lowers price in the hope of getting more revenue and achieves its objective. So, inelastic, they move in the same direction. Elastic, they move in opposite directions. Let's review this graphically. In this example, the price of a product starts at $2 with a demand of 10 or a total revenue of 20. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to lower the price and see what happens to total revenue under the total revenue test. When the price is lowered to a dollar, demand goes to 40, yielding a total revenue of 40. We can say that price and total revenue moved in opposite directions. The demand is very elastic. So here we have this orange block, $2.10. Marketing whiz kids come in and say, hey, I think we can get more revenue if we lowered our price to a dollar. And sure enough, the blue gain exceeds the orange loss. And we can say that the demand for this particular product is elastic. In the second example, price starts at 4 and the quantity demanded is 10, or a total revenue of 40. The firm lowers the price to a dollar, hoping to increase revenue. However, when they lower the price, to a dollar, the quantity demanded only increases to 20, and the total revenue falls to 20. Clearly, the demand is inelastic, and no business gain was derived from lowering the price. All they got was marketing headaches. So what you have here is the orange loss exceeds the blue gain, and we can very graphically and easily explain with the total revenue test that the demand for this product or service is inelastic. Remember, not all products and services have the same sensitivity to price.
for a number of different reasons. You now know how to calculate the demand sensitivity.